Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash I don't work here, lady. I hope you're well prepared as we have four news stories about crazy people waiting for us today. And the first. Even crazier lady screams at crazy lady. Here's the cast. Crazy lady is C. Me, gigantic one-legged lord of darkness is M. Crazy savior, W. And the story. I'm wandering around my local Tesco's at about 11.30 p.m. after a hard day's work. I have headphones on and I'm trying to work out what I'm going to cook when I get home as my brain's a little fried from the mind-numbing tedium of welding all day. I love the job, but I've been stuck making nearly 4,000 of the same item. As I round the corner, I see a friend that works there and the how's life, etc. chat carried on looking around for something I wanted to eat. I'm in the chiller section looking with a blank expression on my face at steaks when I'm slapped around the back of the head. Thinking it was my friend, I turn around and say, WTF was, why is the fish section closed? I have no idea. It's not like I work here. Don't lie. I saw you talking to staff a moment ago. I want some fish. Just go do your job. Sorry, but I don't work here. I can't help you. Now, before I could add anything, she cut me off with, just shut up and do your job. I don't pay your wages for you to stand around doing nothing. Look, I said, I'm not even in uniform. I have grease all over my hands and my face is nearly black. Do I look like I work in this crap hole? It was at this point that a small lady in her early 40s walked down the aisle straight toward us and stopped, looked at me, looked at crazy lady, and says, Hey lady, can you tell me where the bread is? Crazy lady says, I don't work here. W screams at the top of her voice, That's exactly what he said. Now F off. But he works here. No, he doesn't. He works with me, and I'm effed off waiting for him because you won't leave him the F alone to do his effing shopping. Now get the F away from us. Crazy lady says, I'm going to get him sacked. Where's your manager? W. Probably at home, effing his wife. C. Then storms off towards the front of the store looking for a manager, shouting about finding a manager and how I'm going to be fired soon. So me and W walk around the store, finishing our shopping, and as we get to the checkout, we hear C's voice shout, that's them over there. She stood with what I think could have been a manager, or a random person she thinks is a manager. We walk towards them, and W shouts, he is actually effing a manager, or some CT you picked at random to play manager. The person with her doesn't say a word as we walk out to our cars. I thank the lady, and we parted. Next day, I was at work telling the fellas what happened when I hear W say if she'd give it any more lip, she'd have slapped the effing crap out of her. Yeah, I didn't know she worked at the same place as me, but she was in the office and was above my manager. I personally thought she was just joking in Tesco's when she claimed we worked together. I'd only been with the company about six months, so I didn't really know everyone in the office as I had very few dealings with them since I was pretty new. Anyway, it still makes me laugh to this day. It's a small world. That line about the manager going home and effing his wife is gold. And our next story. I'm sorry, I don't work here, so I must be stealing. This happened about three days ago. Now, I'm only 13, and on this specific day of school, we had an early release. So my BFF and I went down to the shop just down the road. Entitled, Bish Lady is EBL, me is me, and my friend is BFF, worker is W. Now, I'm not exactly tall, but I was taller than EBL, who was like four foot nine. Anyway, me and BFF were looking at some sweets, being quite fast. She had to get home reasonably quickly when EBL pushed me aside, grabbed some sweets, and asked how much they are. Now, I did actually know the price, but with her asking me like that, I wasn't telling her anything. I'm normally kind of a shy kid. I swear half the people in my class don't know who I am. But there are certain things that make me snap. And EBL just straight up pushing me and giving me attitude made me mad. EBL pushing me. How much are these? Me. I don't know. Why should I? You have eyes. Use them. EBL. How dare you talk to me like that? Me. I'm sorry. Didn't you just push me demanding me to tell you something and assume I work here and I'm the rude one? W. Hey, what's going on here? Is there a problem? EBL. I need this brat fired. She was rude and threw these sweets at me. BFF, oh, come on, you know that's not true. You pushed her and demanded her to tell you how much they cost, then got angry at her. What's wrong with you? W, is this true? 
Now, you should know there are no cameras there apart from right at the front by the counter, so it was our word against hers. EBL, of course it is. Why would I lie? Now, please fire her. W. Well, I'm very sorry, ma'am, but she doesn't work here. She's a school kid. Comes here pretty often. EBL. What do you mean? Of course she does. She's here now, isn't she? Me. Yeah, we got let out early. EBL. Well, anyway, she was stealing. BFF. What the hell? No, she wasn't. Neither of us were. You're messed up. Luckily, we were good friends with the worker, and he knew we wouldn't do anything like that. In fact, sometimes he gave us free sweets. W. Look, I'm sorry, ma'am, but you're going to have to leave. EBL. Ugh. I just can't believe the service here. She left. Worker. You two all right? BFF. I'm sure we'll be okay with some chocolate. W. Take it. Enjoy your holiday. And our next story. I don't work here, lady. I drive that truck over there. Greetings, IDWHL. It's me, from a long hiatus, DP Nowitzki. Back again for another tale from the mirror realm where everything is the same but slightly dumber. The story begins. With me, during my recent enrollment in a truck driving school, we were out learning how to maneuver a truck on local roads, and our instructor wanted to grab some food from Wawa. Yes, the region is the Northeast USA. We parked the truck and got out, headed inside, grabbed drinks and snacks before we got back out on the road. Next thing I know, I feel a sharp tug on my sleeve. At this point, I should point out that I'm wearing a high-vis vest, jeans, boots, and a black t-shirt. I did kind of look like an employee. Lady. Young man, come fill up my car for me. Chop, chop. She actually did say that. Me. Ma'am, I'm not allowed to pump gas. I don't work here. Lady. Don't give me that, little boy. You have a vest on. You work here. Get back to work and pump my gas. By now, you should realize that I am in the great state of New Jersey. Me. Seriously, I don't work here. Never have. Lady. Well, you obviously work at a gas station. Only gas station laborers use vests like that. Me. Walking to truck. And construction workers. And dock workers. And police officers. And gasp. Truck drivers in training. Lady, I drive that truck over there. The big red one with the gray trailer. The lady was visibly angry now. I command you to pump my gas. Why is it so hard for you to understand? I took my leave from crazy, shaking my head and walking away. She stared as I did just what I said and climbed up into the cab, then started that wonderfully loud Mercedes diesel. Meanwhile, an actual employee had been standing by what I assume was her car, looking annoyed. On the plus side, a kid coming out of the Wawa wanted me to blow the air horn, which I was happy to do. It's not my job to haul scrap metal at night, but I did it anyway. It was around 9 p.m. I just sat down on the couch with a cup of tea after an hour-long struggle to get my six-year-old boy to bed. All of a sudden, there is a tremendous noise out in front of my house. Sounds like the world's ending. A metal apocalypse. I leap up and run to the front window and squint out into the darkness of my usually quiet blue-collar suburban street. There, across the road, is my neighbor, Johnny. He's dragging a 12-foot-long metal beam along the sidewalk, resting one end on the top edge of a big cage trailer, then trying to shove-slide the beams down and inside. The noise is unbelievable. I watch for a couple minutes in disbelief and grow angrier as I notice about 50 more metal beams stacked behind him. This isn't going to finish anytime soon. Then, to top it off, my son wakes up and starts making a fuss. I grab a piece of paper and write an angry message at Johnny in big block letters. My neighbor Johnny is profoundly deaf, hence the written note. He's lived in that house for all his 50 years and alone since his mother died a decade ago. He hasn't done so well by himself. I think his house has fallen into disrepair. He's hoarded so much scrap metal that it's filled his property and flowed over the outside of his wall, encroaching on the sidewalk. I know the mess drives other neighbors crazy, but I don't particularly care. Makes me feel less guilty about not mowing my lawn as often as I should. Apart from the eyesore, he's never bothered me in any way. I barely had anything to do with him at all over the years, to be honest. At 9 p.m. last night, however, I was spitting mad. Another huge boom echoes outside. Fantasies of physical violence flash through my mind. The blood rage takes me. I grab my angry note, 
put on my slippers, and storm out the door in my pajamas straight over to him. I'm tall, heavily built, pretty mean looking guy. Johnny's like 5'5", five five, looks kind of like a shrunken version of Zach Galifianakis. My appearance startles him and he looks up at me with a worried face, still holding one end of the metal beam, sweat running down his cheeks. I am about to unleash on him. I look down at this small, hairy, deaf hobbit man in front of me. I look back across the street at my son watching this from behind the screen door. I look at the angry note in my hand. My anger evaporates and is replaced by something else. I felt ashamed. I consider how he's been deaf since birth and may not even realize how noisy he's being and I feel even more ashamed. I shove the note in my pocket before he sees it. I point to my chest, then do a weightlifting motion with my hands. His face brightens and he nods excitedly. I walk over and grab one end of a beam. He grabs the other. I start helping him haul those 90 pound metal beams into his trailer. And after 20 minutes, I'm breathing hard and we finally get the last one in. I feel him squeeze my arm. He's smiling up at me and mouths, thank you. The only word we exchange the whole time. I nod and go home. A couple minutes later, I'm in the bathroom washing the dirt and sweat away and my son comes in. He's angry and confused, like a disappointed mob that didn't get to watch the hanging they were promised. Why didn't you shout at him, Daddy? You should have taught him a lesson. He's an idiot. Idiot being the strongest word in my son's vocabulary. So I sit him down on the couch and I put my arm around him, cuddle up, and I talk to him about the different ways I could have handled that situation and about neighbors and helping and being kind and about how you meet all types of people in your life and the story of the scar by my eye and how much I regret the times I've been aggressive in my life. He's silent afterwards and seems to be in deep thought as I carry him back to bed. I drove past Johnny today and he waved and did a bicep flex at me. Like, hey, aren't we the two metal hauling muscle men of the street? I couldn't help but chuckle. This story's a great example for your son and for all of us. And guys, thank you all for watching the video to the end. I'll see you in the next one.